So, I had a weekend down these reality call last night, and a lot of what I talked about is, is that I a lot of times don't feel like I'm going to get what I need to get by, and then I feel like my body's very hungry, and I'm always trying to scramble to get enough nutrition, and enough treatment, and enough everything. I looked at, I wrote a treatment plan for myself, the minimum of what I want to do every day lately with the toxoplasmosis, and it's about six hours of stuff, not counting waking myself up every two or three hours during the night to take hydrogen peroxide, food grade hydrogen peroxide. That's a lot of work um, to do in a day. And then, you know, I'm always, I just always feel like I'm lacking something. My body's just like trying to get by on fumes or like, I, I very, especially when going through a stress like this, you know, infection, like I just, I don't know, I, I, I'm trying to take this supplement um, called Super Jing from Dragon Herbs because it, it was advertised for like, if you're so, so depleted from <laughs> years of illness and years of stress, then like this will help to replenish your Jing, and I think my Jing must be very low after just running myself into the ground in so many ways for so long. I think honestly that studying math really depleted me too. It's stressful. Studying math in college is adrenally stressful. Just always pushing yourself. And so I feel kind of good from that. And what ended up happening today is that I, I didn't feel like I needed as much ozone because I felt like my immune system was working more. And so I haven't really used ozone now in seven hours. I'm okay. Usually I have to use it every four hours. I feel fine. I don't even know if I need to use it before bed. And I feel very feverish. I feel emotional, which sometimes happens when I'm hurting and stuff. So maybe this gene stuff is helping. But back to just, I'm trying to, from a waking down perspective, just feel the vulnerability of like I really need hugs and I really need to have that a few, few times a week and I right now I'm not really getting it like I have a partner but they have a ton of other partners and, and because they need hugs too it's kind of perverse like both of us need hugs so much that we're always trying to like make sure we ensure that we get it they actually spend most of their life trying to get connection and sex and hugs because it's just that critical as like a fuel for your body when you're sick and um, they don't have you know, as much money as I have for treatment and stuff, so that's their main treatment. And it's we talk about how funny it is. It's like socializing for us is like a treatment, and it's like our job. You know, it's like work. It's not like oh something we do for fun to relax. It's like no, like having enough people in our life, <laughs> having enough friends, and as a job, it's really a lot of work to keep replenishing the people because some people move or like get busy or shit happens and I don't know. So it feels very like life or death for me right now because I'm trying to get over this infection so it's like my immune system has to come out ahead of the infection and sometime before my antibiotics run out or before I start having too many antibiotic side effects which is feels like it I'm already feeling like I'm on the verge of that. I'm starting to get some like candida feeling in my gut which I hate, but I used to have that all the time for three years, it was terrible, and I, you don't want to have candida when you're already having mold on this, so I just feel, I just feel like I'm barely scraping by, and then you know, it's like, you need cuddling so much, but it's so much work to go find it, when you're disabled and it's hard to date and you have to explain a lot of stuff and you have to like go to the location before the date and make sure it's not moldy and it's just there's a lot of stuff you feel like you have to hide and and it's just I don't know I just feel like I found a good setup with somebody where we were friends and we were cuddle and everything and it felt great and the person made me feel safe and then I lost it because he got back with his ex. And I'm just still kind of reeling from that, of like, okay, I had my cuddling needs met, and now I don't, and I need, it's just, and, and sometimes you end up cuddling with people you don't like just because you're trying to get cuddling. Mm. It's just, it's just bad. It's just, 
situation. I really should get an ammo. It's really bad to me. It just it just feels like your body's like crying out your touch and you're not getting it. And um, pressure, you're crying out for pressure, maybe. You go to lie on the floor or something. If I had like a weighted blanket that'd be good, but those are probably too heavy, it'd probably hurt me. Anyway, I did have some fun today because I went running by the river and I had an oxytocin high or no, endorphin high after that. Which I don't know if I've ever had in my life, like a really noticeable high after running. And I was like, hmm. So, like, people are not kidding about that. There's so many things that I think people are just joking about. And they're like, oh, you feel warm and fuzzy, or your breath is taken away, or all these things. And then, like, years later, I experience it. And I'm like, oh, like, people actually feel that. Like, I thought it was just, like, something that would happen that you wouldn't, it's just a figurative thing, or. You wouldn't actually feel the endorphin high, it was more diffuse. And this was like, I was high, I was really like, alright, I feel really different. I feel like I got an IV of something, you know. So, so I guess right now I'm stuck with just running to alleviate this withdrawal, basically, that I'm feeling, you know, the oxytocin withdrawal. Yep. Yeah.